this is the card holder here once again back for episode two of return of the daily blade and first off uh i'm just gonna let my partner last venom 76 take over for a few minutes i wonder if he's here you there man Hey guys, the Last Venom 76 here, joining you and Dakari on this installment of Return of the Deadly Blade. Today we are featuring classic Showdown at the Cotton Mill. Uh, now this movie is from 1978. Uh, it's directed by Wu Ma. Uh, it was also produced uh, by Cheng Shei. Um, on the on the cover here on this rare scope edition you can see that it says from the co-director of Cheng Shea. Um actually it was it was produced by Cheng Shea. Uh he was uncredited as he was um tied up with uh Shaw Brothers at the time. Um so this movie unfortunately is not a Shaw Brothers title. Uh so it lacks um in that department as far as uh the quality goes. Uh, it would have benefited quite a bit had it been uh, a Shaw Brothers release. Um, as far as um, presentation, um, choreography, it does lack somewhat, but it is still a, a classic uh, must-watch. Um, a cult favorite, too. Uh, not a lot is, is talked about uh, Showdown at the Cotton Mill, uh, but it is uh, very well uh, done in its own right as a uh, independent. It's about this uh, guy that's he becomes an enemy uh, of the Qing government. And the Qing government hires all these Wu-Tang masters um, to dispatch this guy. End up one of them that they end up employing is a, uh, a northern, you know, a champion of northern kicks. So it ends up with the final duel between uh, northern kicks and uh, southern fist. Um, which in fight is is very very well done. I, I enjoyed it. Drew Dukari is going to cover the whole those type aspects on it as as far as uh, the uh, soundtrack and the choreography and the presentation of the film. But like I said, my thoughts it, it would have benefited had it been an actual uh, a Cheng uh, Cheng Shea uh, directed Shaw Brothers title. It's still amazing, uh, amazing stuff here. Now this rare scope edition, um, it does. I'm not sure if it's. Uh, this is the only version that, that I've seen. Close to the beginning of the f uh, of the film, it, it does suffer some um, some poor editing. Um, it's got some. Um, I mean, uh, the color's not too great on this. Um, but yeah, I, other than that, I, there's really no problems with it. Really. Uh, I recommend you guys check it out if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm sure Dakari's going to cover a bit more on this. But, um, I'm happy that he invited me on to do this uh, with him. I'm so glad that martial art films are an amazing common bond uh, that's, that's joining uh, various cultures and races together uh, into one love for this for this genre yeah guys make sure you check out Dakari's other videos um, make sure you like and subscribe to his channel stay tuned for uh, more episodes of return of the deadly blade and Dakari thank you so much once again for inviting me on here to do this with you I really appreciate it and look forward to you contributing uh, to my series okay guys so when I originally wrapped up the video I again didn't really get a chance to thank Lax last Venom 76 for his contribution towards the video. He went out of his way to collaborate with me, you know, and I thank him for doing that. And I will definitely be participating in one of his uh, entries in his Martial Madness series. So be on the lookout. All right, so I guess it's my turn now. So this film originally came out in 1978 and is directed by frequent Chang Che collaborator, Hong Kong actor, filmmaker, Wu Ma, uh, rest in peace for cooperating and collaborating with Chang Che a lot, especially in the Shaw Brothers films like Water Margin, Allman the Brothers, and so on and so forth. Uh, this movie takes place right after the film Shaolin Avengers, which he co-directed with Chang Che. It's all about uh, who getting on the warpath, 
uh, for his father's revenge. But then things go south after he takes revenge for his father. The Ching Lun house, they continue to investigate and investigate uh, uh, the traces of Hu Wei Chen, uh, played by Chi Quan Chun. And, um, you know, throughout, throughout their investigations, they hire people from the Wu Tang clan to, uh, you know, create several plans and, uh, you know, try to assassinate Hu Hui Chen. Throughout the film, we know that Hu Hui Chen can handle himself, you know. You know, when you watch, when you watch the fight scenes, and you can tell that Chi Quan Chun really embodied himself in the role as Hu Hui Chen. The character was really believable. You actually felt like he was Hu Hui Chen, you know. And, you know, in this movie, he can't seem like, you know, like, you know, he's invincible in a way because he's handling all these oppressors, but at the same time, we're reminded that he has responsibilities, you know, he has brothers that he has to watch out for from the Shaolin Temple and the priest Sante, you know, he continues to be worried about him because he has all these people uh, and oppressors who are calling to capture and to kill him. Bounties on his head, he has warranties, you know, and Monk Sante is really worried about him in this case. And if I were in his shoes, I wouldn't blame him because that's my dear disciple and I've been teaching him for years. So, you know, I kind of feel Sante's pain. Dorian Tan as Pai Mei's best student, Kao Jing Cho. Know Dorian Tan for his uh, flash legs technique. Uh, hence the name, hence his nickname, Flash Legs. You know, I think his technique really stand out, really stood out in this movie. You know, especially towards the end, uh, him and uh, Chi Quan Chun. Uh, I think, I think, you know, his fights. He added his own flair to the fight scene. Uh, speaking of the fight scenes, the fight scenes do do have a sense of realism to it, and I think that's due to the photographer. Uh, Chen Shi Le, I think that's how you pronounce his name, Chen Shi Le. I think that, you know, he portrayed sort of a raw, realistic atmosphere to the fight scenes because the fights were definitely grounded to reality, in my opinion. The reason why I love to watch these movies a lot is because of these wide range shots that we get uh, a lot from these movies, especially from the Sharp of this films. And this film is no exception. It definitely has a lot of wide range cinemascope shots, especially during the fight scenes. And that's out of many of the fight scenes in the film and how they're filmed. Uh, those are examples of what I want to bring back when I make my own movies one day, honestly. This movie is, is the fight scenes. Another thing is the cinematography, which is beautiful. Uh, I do love the uh, straightforwardness of the film. You know, it doesn't have too much going on. You know, so you can, the film is very easy to follow. You know, Hu Wei Chen has simple tasks to do. He solves them, but at the same time, you know, he's like I said, he's still human. So the movie has a very, very uh, straightforward premise that's easy to follow. And the fight scenes are choreographed extremely well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of cool shapes and you know, confidence being portrayed uh, through these characters while fighting. You know, martial arts director Chang Peng, who was in this movie playing Wei Xing Hong, uh, he definitely kind of stands out in this movie as a choreographer and an actor. You know, I think for the most part, Everybody in the roles were believable, especially well, actress Tang Xiaowen, who plays um, Hu Hui Chen's wife. I thought she was uh, pretty believable as uh, his wife in the role she was in. The movie's message was all about, you know, being patient and choosing wisely before you do things. Because Hu Hui Chen, you do things. Because Hu Hui Chen, uh, Hu Hui Chen got things done like that, but at the same time. I'm say it again, we are human. The message that the film was trying to convey was that, you know, make wise decisions and be patient because you never know what will happen to you. So, yeah, I think that that's exactly what the movie was trying to say. You know, like I said, I always look for messages in whatever type of movie they are. But, you know, I think that it's, the movie has a pretty solid message. It's not just your average kung fu film that you're looking to watch on a Saturday morning and to lounge with and have fun with your friends and watch. It's not just that. 
Although the fight scenes are in very entertaining, really cool protagonist and a really cool antagonist at the same time, uh, there is still a great message to be taken away from this film that kind of uh, deals with everyday life. And that's what I love about these movies. Uh, the only issue that I have with this film is that, you know, there are a lot of missing parts in the movie and the missing parts uh, can kind of make the film a bit uneven because this film uh, has been considered lost for years and when you watch the film there's a lot of bad prints and the color has deteriorated deteriorated over the years so you can tell that the film has been lost for years other than that I think this is a very solid martial arts film uh, with believable characters uh, creative and fun fight scenes that are really grounded to reality uh, and a great message and I think that all Kung Fu fans should see this movie grade I had a really fun time watching this movie. I've, I've seen this movie so much to where I know all the cues, the musical cues, I know most of the lines, and I know some of the uh, martial arts moves that are shown in the movie. One other, one other nitpick, a lot of movies, because this movie came out in 1978, and I think Chang Che went on to make uh, you know, movies with similar storylines like Avenging Warriors of Shaolin and Two Champions of Shaolin. Uh, movies kind of have uh, some of the similar uh, premises and some of the same characters. So that's just a little nitpick. This was one of the first movie, first martial arts movies that I discovered uh, while getting into martial arts movies. Was I, I was in the second grade. Uh, I remember getting the Bruce Lee movies for Christmas, and you know I remember doing, remember going on YouTube, watching all these videos, clips from the movies, and you know one of the one of the suggestions was showdown at the cotton mill. And I don't know what made me click on it, but I was thinking, of, that, that looks interesting. Let me see what that looks like. And, you know, from that moment on, I was hooked. Like, couldn't stop watching the opening title sequence. I never seen anything like it before. You know, the Chinese letters next to the uh, English translation, the epic music blaring in the background. Music is really catchy too, and you know I've always loved that. Showdown Out at the Cotton Mill was one of my first martial arts film discoveries. Uh, I discovered it in second grade, and I went to Walmart one day uh, during this time, and I was looking for the movie, and I was upset because they didn't have it. So. I had to wait until the fourth grade to go on Amazon and look for this thing and I had this exact same copy since the fourth grade. It's still in brilliant condition. So that was my viewpoint on Showdown at the Cotton Mill. I hope you guys had a good time watching this review uh, and I hope you guys will stay tuned for more content. I'll give thanks to my friend Last Venom 76 for uh, becoming a participant in this series. I really appreciate the love and support we all have for this movie. Because we are the Deadly Blade. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys pretty soon. You guys have a blessed day.